Hey YouTubers, your old buddy Platt, and today we're continuing on our beer style series. And today we're going to talk about another style that's kind of not a style, you know. Uh, we're going to talk about barrel aged beers. Uh, this could have almost been thrown in with a specialty beer, but I, these are kind of unique, so I wanted to talk about them in a, in a separate way. Uh, the name kind of gives it away. These are beers that are aged in wooden barrels. Um, most of the wooden barrels are going to be either wine barrels, um, old port barrels. Um, most of them are used spirit barrels uh, here in the U.S. bourbon, but they could also be tequila, old scotch barrels, what have you. And the wood itself in those barrels, they're, they're charred and uh, they're lightly toasted. And if you know anything about bourbons, the different toast levels you know, in the barrels impart different flavor levels in the in the uh, the bourbon, and the same kind of goes with these uh, beers. Now, most of the barrels are oak, but they don't have to be. Uh, some people are using hickory barrels. Some people are using applewood barrels. I know Dogfish Head's done some work with cedar, so predominantly oak, but mo but they are playing around with other woods. Also, even though we say barrel aged in this category. A lot of people can flavor or wood aged beers without having to necessarily use a barrel. Uh, for your home brewers, you might know this. Uh, one of the great ways is these wood screws that they use in, in the wine industry. Um, they're cut in a certain way that allows maximum exposure to the wood. And a little screw like this will work for a large batch of beer. Also, something you might find in your home uh, brew shop is these little toasted wood cubes. And uh, these are great for if you're doing small batches. But there's tons of ways to get wood into, you know, the flavor of your beer. And these are thrown into your uh, fermenter. Again, if you're a home brewer, you would throw these into your fermenter while your beer is firming. And, and again, the uh, what happens is the alcohol in the beer interacts with the wood, kind of chemically interacts, draws out certain tannins, certain flavors, uh, the sugars get caramelized in the wood when they're charred and that the the alcohol in the beer kind of interacts with that and uh, that's what imparts that unique uh, barrel aged uh, taste to beer. Uh, the beer we're going to try today is a perfect example of this. Um, Anderson Valley Bourbon Barrel Stout. Um, with these beers, this is a stout and it's a good example. Most of the beers that are going to be barrel aged, wood aged, what have you, are tend to be bigger beer. Now any beer can be barrel aged, but to stand up to the intense flavors that you pick up out of the woods, you're going to need a, a bigger beer. That's why you're not going to see a lot of Pilsners or light lagers or Hefeweizens being barrel aged, even though conceptually they could be. Like so we're going to drink a stout today, and the folks at Anderson Valley Age this stout three months in used wild turkey barrels. Now, um, if you're not a big wild turkey drinker or don't know much about it, wild turkey is one of the classic American bourbons, and it is distilled at a lower ABV, so they have to so they use less water to cut it down, and they also bottle at a higher ABV, which again less water to cut it down. So they hold a lot more of that flavor that comes off the still in their bourbon. And that gets imparted to the barrel that's aged at, and hopefully the guys from Anderson Valley are able to extract that out of the uh, barrel. Uh, this beer is 6.9 ABV, so again, it's a, it's a bigger beer and has more alcohol to interact with the wood, more flavor to kind of stand up to what we get out of the wood. Uh, the bourbon itself, if you've never had wild turkey, has a nice long flavor, and we're gonna see if that gets imparted into this beer. So, let's give her a try. Oh, we get a nice uh, darker khaki head. This is a nice dark porter. Let's give her a nose. Classic little chocolatey notes. Um, I do get a hint of the vanilla that you would get from the wood a little bit. Let's give her a try. Oh, that is nice, nice and rich. A lot of, a lot of sweet, com complex notes. Espresso, toffee, some rich chocolate. Uh, 
a bit of vanilla, but when I say vanilla, I like vanilla bean. Oh yeah, this is almost a dessert in a glass. Um, you do get the bourbon sweetness, um, especially the punch on the front of the tongue. If you've ever had a good example, like a Maker's Mark or that bourbon sweetness really hits you in the front of that tongue and you get a little bit of that here. Plenty of finish, plenty of mouthfeel. This is a whew, this is a real good beer. I I have to get it, and, it, and again you get it, the sweet, complex notes. You know, porters already have a lot there, but this seems to just add add on top of that. You know, a lot of porters you'll get, you know, you'll get the chocolate, but not not a lot more. However, with this. You know, it has has a, a a complexity of sweetness. I guess is what I'm trying to say. Let me take one more sip. Oh yeah, that definitely shows you that these beers. You know, there's a lot of room to work with. Um, I definitely would like to try a hickory beer. Um, see what the boys at Dogfish Head did with cedar, but I believe with this kind of beer, that bourbon barrel. That really rich taste that you get from a good bourbon mixed with a stout it has, has done a pretty good job. Well, I hope you liked this video. If you did, please subscribe down below. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, you can always leave them in the comment section, or you can contact me on the Twitter page. Well, until next time, bottoms up.